what did, what did we call this branch? If you know, please raise your hand. What do we call the branch of linguistics that studies the relationship between language and society? Yes, Abbas? Again, Abbas, Masinak. Yes, it's sociolinguistics. This branch of linguistics is called uh, is called sociolinguistics. It's the field that studies the relationship between language and society, the uses of language and the social structures in which the users of the language, like the speakers, the people, live. It actually studies the, the it, it uh, considers the human society as made up of specific patterns or structures or behaviors. And these patterns, some of them are linguistic. linguistic. So sociolinguistics is not interested in all patterns of the, of the society. Sociolinguistics is only interested in the patterns of the society that, that affect the language spoken by the people. It also studies the, the effect of language on the society. The influence of language on society is called the sociology of language. And the, the, the effect of uh, society on language is called sociolinguistics. But whether we study here, uh, for the time being in this course, whether we study the effect of society on language or language on society, uh, both of them fall under the field of sociolinguistics. So when we talk about the relationship between language and society, that's sociolinguistics. It doesn't study um, a marriage and, and divorce. It, does, it doesn't study the, the habits and the traditions. It only studies the social factors that affect the society. And why this is zawaj or talaq, and the habits and the things that the social phenomena that affect the language. Whether in pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, meaning, style, and so on. Okay, so what are the things that sociolinguistics are interested in? Sociolinguistics are interested, is interested in, 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 in the accents and the dialects, the differences between uh, the different varieties of the language, the variations within the language, the differences in, in pronunciation, in grammar, and, and, and vocabulary, in structure and morphology, and all of these things. Like, consider our society, for example. People who live in Al Mdaina speak different from those people who live in Abu al Khasib. And those who live in Abu al-Khasib speak different from those who live in Azubar. Those who live in Azubar speak different from those who live in Safwan. And all of those speak different from those who live in this city center here in Basra. And the differences are caused by different reasons. The reasons could be geographical reasons, regional reasons, the region or the geographical area, the regional location of the person affects his variety, his speech or her speech. So you speak different because you live in Abu al-Khasib and you speak different because you live in Zubair and you speak different because you are affected by the geographical area, the region in which you live. Some people say uh, uh, instead of ka. and some say ye instead of je. And some uh, um, produce uh, different vowels than the others because of the geographical area. And sometimes the differences Sometimes the differences are caused by uh, social factors. 
like education, for example. Education affects the variety you speak. The profession also, the job, the occupation also affects the variety you speak. Age also affects the variety of speech. And also gender or sex, being a male or female, affects the variety you speak. And also social class, low class, middle class, or high class, and prestige also affects the variety you speak. And this is something else. These are social factors that affect your language. And sometimes your language is affected by regional or geographical factors, and sometimes your language is affected by social factors. Good. So what are other social factors that affect the language, or what are, what are other things that sociolinguistics is interested in? Sociolinguistics is also interested in knowing the differences between speech and writing. You know, there are two modes of communication, speech and writing. If I ask you now, if I ask you, raise your hand if you know the answer. If I ask you, uh, which form, which form, do you think is 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 more difficult or more advanced or more sophisticated? It has more technical words and technical vocabulary, more difficult words. Which one is it? Speech or writing? What do you think? Raise your hand and tell me. Yes, Yusuf. Yes, sir. I, I think speech is more difficult. No, I'm I, I'm not talking about uh, speech as a, as a skill. Yes, maybe as a skill is more difficult. But I mean, when you speak and when you write, in in which form do you use more difficult words? Do you put the difficult words in speech or you put the difficult words in writing? I I don't know, but maybe in writing because. Writing is more difficult for some people. Yes, in writing, in writing, actually, when we speak, we use simple, uh, a simple language, a simple form. But in speech, we we use uh, in speech we use a simple language. But in writing, we use a difficult language, a sophisticated language. And uh, and. Uh, In writing, we use difficult words, advanced words, sophisticated terms. كلمات يعني صعبة كلمات مثلاً معقدة ممكن لأول مرة شخص يستخدمه. But in speech, people or speakers or participants within a speech community, and by the way, the the term speech community is very important when we talk about social linguistics. It refers to a group of people. Uh, family, a uh, society, a city, a village, we'll come to that. In speech, people use uh, a simple language, but in writing, they use a difficult language. Let me ask you an another question. Which form of the language, speaking or writing, that has more repetitions? It has more repetitions. Which one? Is it speech or writing? What do you think, Fatma Ahmed? Uh, of course, the uh, speak. The speak we when we speaking a lot of words. But yes, uh, that, yes, that's right. Speech has more repetitions. Speech has more repetitions than writing. We repeat words. We repeat expressions, and sometimes we repeat entire utterances. And if you have noticed this in in Iraqi Arabic, for example, someone says hello, shlonak, shansahtak. And then they keep talking about something, something other than greeting, something uh, very important, a very important topic. And then they, they go back to the same utterance, which is, So speech involves repetition, unlike writing, which doesn't involve repetition. Good. Um, now, another question, which form of the language, speech or writing, that uh, involves fragments or incomplete sentences? 
incomplete sentences or maybe fragments? Is it a speech or writing? Fatma Abdel Yes, sir. Uh, of course, uh, speech, uh, more fragments. But uh, in writing, we uh, must uh, uh, use uh, any uh, grammar. Complete sentences. Complete yes. sentences. Yes. That's right. Speech is more fragmental. It has more fragments, more uh, uh, incomplete sentences than writing. But in writing, uh, we usually uh, use uh, complete sentences. So knowing about the differences between speech and writing, uh, you know, these kinds of linguistic differences between these two mediums of communication is also part of sociolinguistics. Sociolinguistics also studies the differences in pronunciation between different social classes, like how people from the low class uh, pronounce some words, and how people from the middle class pronounce some words, and how people from the high class or the prestigious class pronounce some words. Sociolinguistics is also interested in knowing the relationship between language and sex or language and gender. Is it sex or gender? And we're going to talk about this in one of the parts uh, in this chapter. Which term we should use and why? Like here, for example, we talk about uh, the question. We, uh, we try to answer the question of who speaks more? Who do you think speaks more? Men or women, for example? Males or females? And why? Maybe, maybe in our society, you say that women talk more than men. Maybe this is true. Okay. Uh, just ended, uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe in, in our society, we say that uh, women talk more than men. Maybe in other societies, men talk more than women. So we, we're actually interested in knowing the differences between men and women and how they speak. Not just this, but if I ask you, who do you think speaks a more polite language? A more polite language. Who do you think speaks a more polite language? Men or women? What do you think? Uh, What do you think? Who speaks a more polite language? The men or the women? Many, many, it can them loga ambaf or muhadda baakfar. Yes, Saad. Uh, a woman. Yes. Woman. Yes, yes that, that's right. The women speak a more polite language. Uh, this this uh, this doesn't mean this doesn't mean that women don't call names and they don't use bad language. No, sometimes some women use bad language in some uh, in some occasions, whether in our society, in our culture, or in all other cultures and societies. But when we talk in general, everyone agrees in all societies and in all cultures that women are more polite or speak more polite language than men. And this is, uh, that's uh, true. But sometimes, and then uh, recently, especially in occupations and jobs and companies, uh, recent studies have proved that men and women are equal when it comes to politeness. Okay, so I, uh, I said that, yes, women, I said, yes, women are more polite than men. Uh, they speak a more polite language, they don't call names. But this doesn't mean that some women, they don't use bad language. Uh, some women really use bad language in, in, in uh, different cultures, whether in our culture, our society, and all other cultures. Um, if we ask, for example, who gives more orders in speech? Who gives more orders? Men or women? What do you think? Uh, Lemis? Is men or speech? Yes, men, uh, men use more orders, more imperative mm -hmm. clauses or sentences when they speak than uh, women. Uh, for example, if you go to a male doctor, the male doctor will give you orders like stand, sit, 
without saying excuse me, without saying please, without saying, you know, these expressions that show a friendly style. But women usually uh, prefer to use a friendly style. And you say, Adam, it's a slope, mahbub akthar, mahabab lil muqabil akthar. ممكن يعني يقول له بدون زحمه رجاء من فضلك مثلا افتح القميص او اقعد او او قوم اذا مثلا رحت الى طبيبه دكتوره. احيانا لا تلقاها بالعكس تكون نحسه مو مثل الطبيب الدكتور. So but we're talking in general here. In general, doctors prefer to give orders more than and male doctors prefer to give orders more than female, female doctors. So What we're actually talking about here is the differences between males and females in language and speech. Who speaks a more polite language? Who gives more orders? Who speaks more than the other? And in addition to other words, like, okay, who says, you know, who speaks with with hedges and with with expressions like cute, awesome, uh, nice? Who uses more expressions, more uh, words like these, cute and nice and beautiful and... Of course, the women use more hedges and more, uh, you know, kind expressions than men. And this varies according to uh, societies and to cultures. So knowing about the differences between men and, and women is also part of sociolinguistics. Remember, I'm just introducing sociolinguistics, which is the study of the relationship between language and society. And all of these things we're going to explain in detail later on in other lectures. Is everything clear so far? This is the yes, yes. Good. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Very clear. Sociolinguistics is also interested in knowing about bilingual speakers, speakers who speak two languages, two native languages, and also multilingual speakers, speakers who speak more than two languages, three languages. Like imagine if we if if seven if more than 70%, let's say, of people in Basra speak Kurdish, then we can consider Basra as as a bilingual speech community. But Basra is not a bilingual speech community. It's a monolingual speech community because people in Basra only speak Arabic. But if people are capable of speaking Kurdish as a native language, then we can consider that uh, Basra is a bilingual society and people of Basra, Basra people are bilingual speakers. They can switch from Kurdish to Arabic anytime they want, but they cannot. In some societies, for example, in some states of America, people speak English and speak Spanish at the same time as native languages. Because some states are close to Mexico, and you know, the native language of Mexico is Spanish. So you can find them speaking Spanish so fluently, just like a native language. And they, they switch from one code, one language to another, anytime they want. Sometimes in, even in teaching, sometimes even here in teaching, we teach in English, but I sometimes switch to Arabic to clarify it, to, to make meaning clear. This is called code switching. And we also have something that is called code mixing. Code mixing is when you speak English most of the time and you just use words. You don't switch to another language, but you just use words from the, 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 the native language. And this is called code mixing. We're going to talk about code switching and code mixing later. We have something called pigeons and creoles. What is a pigeon language and what is a creole? Listen, we're going to explain this later, but I'm going to give you an idea here. Imagine that a male speaker who is Iraqi works, works somewhere in a company. Okay, let's say in the port. Bilmina Ishtar. And there is a Chinese woman working there also. The, the Iraqi person, the Iraqi man, doesn't know Chinese. He only knows Arabic. He doesn't speak Chinese. And the woman also doesn't speak Arabic. But they work together. They have their, their, their own dealings and their own work together. They have to communicate with each other. They really find it so difficult to communicate and to work together because he speaks Arabic, uh, Iraqi Arabic, and she speaks Chinese. 
So they do what? They actually invent or create some form of a compromise, something in between, something, a language, a form of a language which is neither Chinese nor Arabic, something in between, and they call it a pidgin language, which is not the native language of the man and not the native language of the women. It just has structures from Chinese and structures from Arabic, words from Chinese and words from Arabic. But is it a native language? No. Is it the native language of the man? No. Is it the native language of the woman? No. What has she not bil pigeon? Yes, sir. Okay. Now imagine that this man gets married to the woman. Rajal is a Mara. And then they get children. The children will not hear Arabic. The children will not hear Arabic because the man doesn't speak Arabic, the father. And they will not hear Chinese because the woman doesn't speak Chinese. The children will, will, will only hear that pidgin language. So they will acquire the pidgin language as their native language. البيجن راح يصير نيتف لانجويج مال الاطفال اللي هي اصلا مو لغه موجوده بالعالم ولكن it will be the native language of the children because it's the language that they hear يعني لو الاب والام يصيحون بس 100 و100 و100 children يصيحون 100 و100 خلاص الاب والام يصيحون يحكون بالبيجن لانجويج the children will speak that pigeon language remember language is innately guided language is culturally transmitted children speak the language they are exposed to. They, they acquire the language from their parents. And pidgin will be the native language. And when pidgin becomes a native language, we call it a creole. So what's a creole? Creole is the native is, is a pidgin that is acquired as a native language by the children of two married people who speak two different native languages. <laughs> When we have two people who speak two different native languages, they cannot communicate with each other, so they create a, a, a means of communication, a sort of compromise, a language in the middle. They agree upon it, and they use it. It has structures from this native language and this native language, words from this native language and this native language. But the pidgin itself is not the native language of the woman or the man. That's pigeon. And when the man and the woman get married, when the couple get married, and they have children, the children will speak that pigeon as a native language, and it will be called a creole. What I say? So, uh, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, this yes. Uh, this pigeon language maybe um, might be uh, an English English language. It, it, no, pigeon is not a native language. The pigeon has maybe maybe it has some words from English, some structures from English, and also some structures from uh, Arabic. So it's a mixture. Uh, pigeon is a mixture between uh, languages. Mm -hmm. It's just like a cocktail of languages. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, clear. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse like, uh, me. Two people, uh, yeah, just a second, Fatma. If two people are speaking, so I, I'm, I'm going to explain this further. If two people, are, one is speaking English and one is speaking Arabic, and they work together somewhere, okay? So uh, the, the one who speaks Arabic uh, cannot speak English, and the one who speaks English cannot speak Arabic. So they create a form in the middle that has some words from English and some words from Arabic, some grammatical structures from English and some grammatical structures from Arabic, okay? And they speak it, which it's not a native language of, 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 the, uh, of Arabic. It's not the native language of English, of the English speaker. It's somehow in between, between them. But when these two couples get married, the children will acquire that pigeon as a native language, and we will call it a Creole. Like the, like the Indian, Indian person. 
language. No, that that's not a pigeon. A pigeon is not a pigeon is usually used in uh, occupations and in trades. Occupations and trades. Naam, he is a hygiene. The Hindi is possible to speak Hindi or English. This is bilingual. Speak Hindi or English. It's called bilingual. Okay. Fatma, just sit down, my dear. The Hindi is possible to speak Hindi or English. We call we call him a bilingual speaker. But we're talking about pigeon. Pigeon is not a language, not a real language. Mm. It's it's a, a created language, invented language. لغة اثنين يشتغلون سوا واحد يحكي هندي واحد يحكي صيني. لا الهندي يعرف صيني ولا الصيني يعرف هندي. فشو هني يتعاملون مع بعضهم ولا يشتغلون في مكان؟ يتفقون بيناتهم ويسوون لغة. أوكي ما خذ شوية من الهندي شوية من الصيني يصير لغة هجينة يعني شو نقول طعمة. بين بين تراكيب و و وقوانين لفظ وكلمات من هاي اللغه ومن هاي اللغه ايضا. يس يوسف اي ثينك يو هاف ا كويستشن اور ا كومنت هير نو سر اي جست ونت تو ميك شور ذات بيجن لانجويج از نوت ا هول لانجويج اند يو منشن ات سو اي جوت اوكي فاطمه عبد الحسين يو هاف ا كويستشن يس سر ذا نيو لانجويج Uh, which create by the father and mother. When uh, the father and mother speak it, uh, we call it uh, 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 begins. But when Pigeon. the children Pigeon. begins, okay. But when the uh, children speak the same language, the new language, we uh, create it the uh, Creole. Is that right? That's right. Yes, we call it the Creole. يعني الأب والأم هاي اللغة اللي خلقوها we call it a pigeon okay which is not the native language of the father and not the native language of the mother it's a form in between but when children are born they they will hear only this pigeon language so so uh, ch children they don't know that this is a created language they just hear this language and they imitate that language and the la they will acquire it as their native language. And we call it Creole. Mohin, you have a question or a comment? العفو دكتور نقدر نقول عامل الوراثة إلى إلى حل مشكلة اللغة؟ شو يعني عامل وراثة؟ يعني دكتور الطفل يتعلم يتعلم اللغه مثل استاذ اللهجه اللهجه مالت من المدينه هاي, هاي, هاي اللهجه نعم هاي اللهجه بعدين راح نجي, نجي عليها عامل وراثه اكيد انه انت يعني ابوك وامك وعائلتك يتكلمون مصطلحات معينه ولفظ معين هاي انت راح تاخذها من عندهم فتاثر على لهجتك راح يكون لفظك متاثر بعائلتك هذا مو عامل وراثه وانما عامل الاكتساب اللغه language is not genetically related language is acquired عامل الاكتساب يعني تاخذ مكتسبه تعلم وليس وراثه يعني دكتور ما نقدر نقول وراثه اكتساب لا لو كانت وراثه كان انت انولدت بتغييرات معينه او امور تتعلق باللغه انت ما تنولد بامور انت تتعلم تكتسب الاشياء من البيئه اخذناها بالفصل الثاني الفرق بين الـ الـ يعني the need for learning language is cultural transmitted We acquire the language from the society and the surroundings. Like uh, our pronunciation is affected by the pronunciation of our parents, maybe. Okay. Uh, عائلة ثالثة ما تستخدم لا دولكة ولا جك شنو تستخدم؟ صلاحية 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 اوكي شنو معنى هذا الكلام؟ معنى هذا الكلام انه انه the people people the variety spoken by the people is affected by is affected by uh, the language or the variety they are exposed to some people consider the door the door as a feminine form and some people consider the door as a masculine form البعض يعتبر الباب هو object مؤنث ويقول سدهه 
والبعض يعتبره اوبجكت مذكر ويقول سده. Uh, some people say power, others say what? تاوة. تاوة. اوكي؟ مثلا هسه انا اقول تاوة بس اعرف ناس تقول تاوة. وهذا الشيء يعتمد على شنو؟ يعتمد عن على سببين. اما السبب يكون ريجنال او جيوغرافيكال او السبب يكون سوشيال. ريجنال يعتمد على على المنطقه اللي انا عشت فيها وتربيت فيها ونشات، مو فقط انا ساكن بيها، لا يجوز انا هسه اجيت سكنت ببصره، بس انا عمري كله كنت في منطقه جغرافيه ثانيه هي اللي ماثر على لهجتي. هذا نسميه الريجنال دايلكت. It could be social, related to education, maybe to social class and to age and to other social factors. Why are there about the in the other time? the differences. So here we, we, we're talking about something different. When we mention pigeon and creole, we're talking about something different that is not related to differences in pronunciation, grammar, or uh, vocabulary. No, when when two people, especially in work, especially at work, are working together in a company and they don't understand each other's language, they invent or create a language, a source of a means of communication in between so that they can use and understand each other. This language is not the native language of any of the participants, but it's just a created language, an artificial language, and we call it a pigeon. And when these two couples, when this couple get married, the children, Well, here only that pidgin language, so they will acquire it, and that pidgin language will be the native language. But it's not genetically related, it's acquired. It's acquired. Language is never genetically related, it has nothing to do with genetics. Okay, uh, let's continue. Sociolinguistics is also interested uh, uh, in, soci in speech communities. And by speech community, we mean uh, what? It's a group of speakers who share the same interests, the same hobbies, the same religion, maybe, and the same language, the same habits, the same tradition. مثلا شارع برا هذا نعتبر speech community. وبيتنا يعتبر أيضا speech community خاص. أحيانا one member belongs to two speech communities. شخص تلقو ينتمي إلى إلى مجتمعين. Two speech communities. One speech community is the house. And another speech community is outside the house. مثلاً تلقون الشخص مثلاً بنية مسيحية أهلها كلهم مسيح يعني ويحكون بلغتهم الخاصة ما يحكون عراقي عربي ما يحكون بصراوي بالبيت مثلاً على سبيل المثال يعني أكو هيك عوائل يحكون مثلاً أرمني أو أي أي ما أعرف اللي هاي اللغة اللي يحكون بيها أوكي يتكلمون بيها بالبيت so For, for this girl, the house is a speech community. But when she goes out of the house, she will be a, a new member, another member of another speech community. Another speech community. And she will speak Iraqi Arabic. Basri Iraqi Arabic. A city is a speech community. A classroom, this classroom now is also considered a speech community. Sociolinguistics is interested in knowing about the uh, speech communities. مثلا يجي واحد عالم لغة اجتماعي ويريد يدرس نوع الكلام اللي دائما يقال بالصفوف مثلا من قبل مدرسي المادة الفلانية أو المادة الفلانية ويسوي في الدراسة اللغوية اجتماعية على الصفوف. واحد ثاني ياخذ another speech community اللي ياخذ السوق مثلا اللي هو أيضا يعتبر speech community. واحد ياخذ مدرسة واحد ياخذ مثلا جروب اوف فريندز جروب اوف فريندز اربعه اربعه اصدقاء قاعدين على الرصيف برا يوميا من الساعه 8 لحد الساعه 12 بالليل ذيس از اولسو كونسيدر ا سبيش كوميونيتي سو وات از ا سبيش كوميونيتي سبيش كوميونيتي ريفيرز تو اني جروب اوف بيبل هو شير ذا سيم هابيتس ذا سيم تراديشنز ذا سيم لانجويج ذا سيم انترست ميبي اند هوبيز اند ذي سبيك ذا سيم دايلكت So sociolinguistics is interested in knowing about speech communities. And sociolinguistics is also interested and talks about politeness in speech. Sociolinguistics is also interested in knowing about 
uh, styles, registers, slang, solidarity, and accommodation. Accommodation, solidarity. الهواصر الترابط مع مع المستمعين. شوف مثلاً باراك أوباما, the the ex president, the former president of the United States. You know him. He is a black person. He is a black American. But when he addresses white people, he speaks like white people. And when he addresses black people, he speaks like black people. Just to make them feel like he is one, uh, he's a member of their speech community. And he belongs to them. And he's close to them. حتى يخليهم يشعرون انه هو جزء منهم وليس شخص مو رئيسهم شخص او قائد مختلف عنهم لا هي اكوموديتس سي ذيس تيرم اكوموديتس وذ ذيم وتشوفوا مثلا مرات يروح الى كنيسه ويمارس طقوس اللي بالكنيسه او ذا اودينس ار ساد هي هي سبيكس ان ا ساد تون The audience are happy. He speaks in a happy tone, even if even if it's lying. And politicians are the greatest liars ever. And this is this has been proven by studies. And even if he's lying, he has to do this. And he has to be so genius and so br- brilliant in doing this. He has to act. He has to share his or, or her emotion with the audience. So sometimes we accommodate with the others. And to give you an example, uh, uh, sometimes I uh, one day I met I met someone from Baghdad. Okay, uh, he works in an oil company here in Basra, and he said when I speak in uh, when I, when I speak in the Baghdadi accent, everybody laughs at me, and sometimes they they mock at me. They make fun of me and they say ani rabbi and they make fun of him so he said i had no choice but to change my accent and use the basri accent just to accommodate with those people to make them feel like i'm a member of their speech community and sometimes sometimes people change their 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 accent just to just because the the second accent or the other accent is more prestigious and and more powerful اكو احيانا لكنه ثانيه تحس فيها قوه اجتماعيه اكبر وتشوف شخص يغير لهجته سواء كتابيا او كلاميا متقصد فما يقول انا جاي اقول لك يقول انا دا اقول لك ويتبغض علينا واحنا من البصره وشوف واحد مثلا حتى بالكتابه يقول كلش كلش بالواو مثلا واني وما اعرف شنو وكذا هذا مسائل طبيعيه ومو فقط عندنا او بمجتمعنا وانما uh, in all societies and in all cultures it's normal so see social linguistics is actually a very interesting field of study that covers all of these factors and all of these social elements but only the social elements that have some kind of effect on the language okay احيانا الشخص هو ساكن بالبصره وولد بالبصره ونشا وكبر وعمره كله بالبصره واهله كلهم من البصره ولكن اهله كثيرين السفر احيانا اكو عوامل اجتماعيه فيروحون منا ومنا 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 فمتاثرين لغتهم او لهجتهم متاثره بكلمات او مصطلحات يعني من اماكن اخرى وتشوف الشخص هو بصراوي ولكن يجوز يقول اني ويقول يقول اني ويقول لعد ويقول يعني هاي العباره الثانيه اللي ما يقولوها اهل البصره كلش من البصره أنا أعرف واحد من العمارة، أوكي؟ أعرف شخص من العمارة ويقول صدق ويقول آه ويقول دا يعني دا أقول لك ويعني يحكي مثل بغدادي. ولأنه هو آه أهله بالعمارة ولكن هو 
خدم عسكريته كلها هو يعني كبير بالعمر خدم عسكريته كلها ببغداد وساكن بالبصرة ف you know so many different uh, uh, factors social factors affect the variety that you speak اكو ناس يحكون هيك بدون سفر لانه يقلدون يحاولون يحكون اللهجه الاكثر شيوعا والاقوى او ربما الاكثر احتراما بين اللهجات الاخرى اوكي okay. uh, uh, what about registers and styles and slang you know slang is is the colloquial language the everyday language the language of the layman and اللهجه العاميه الدارجه واضحة شنو هذا الإسلام. register register refers to the kind of technical vocabulary, special specialized vocabulary that is a special speech community speaks. مثلا, social linguistics is interested in in studying the jargon or the register of doctors. وشوف المصطلحات اللي يحكوها الأطباء and how different they are from the terminology or the register or the style of engineers and teachers and salesmen. And laymen and uh, uneducated people, and those people who work with computers and technology, the register of chess, the register of football, the register of politics, the register of uh, media, the register of horoscopes. When you have a طالبة بحث جاي تكتب بحث أنا بتاعت موضوع عن الأبراج أي أبراج ال الأبراج الفلكية ال الثناش. وقلت له حلي اللي يشوفي اللي أخذي الأبراج الإنجليزية والأبراج العربية وسوي سوسيال لينغوستيك ستدي what similarities and differences you can find in the jargon of Arabic horoscopes and English horoscopes تشابه الاختلافات نوع المصطلحات المستخدمة والعبارات بالأبراج العربية والأبراج الإنجليزية طبعا إحنا نشوف منه بالأبراج عبارات شائعة تستخدم دائما مثلا مثلا شريك أوكي أو في الأيام المقبلة أو على الصعيد العاطفي أو على الصعيد الشخصي إذا أحد عنده خبرة بالأبراج ممكن يكون ملاحظ هذه الأشياء. Okay. So this is register. واحد ثاني مثلا ياخذ لعبة الشطرنج، العام العام مثلا أحد طلاب البحث عندي خليته يحلل المفردات الأكثر شيوعا واستخداما في لعبة الببجي. ومدى أهمية لعبة الببجي على الـ 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 improvement of vocabulary acquisition شلون تخلينا نكتسب مفردات أقوى ببجي لها register خاص يعني هاي هي لعبة لعبة it's a, a video game it has its own terms vocabulary and register and jargon FIFA is also another video game which has its own jargon Call of Duty and Mortal Kombat and other video games have their own jargon. كهرباء السيارات إلى مصطلحات الخاصة تختلف عن اللي يشتغل تبريد السيارة. Teachers also have their own jargon, which is different from the jargon spoken by doctors. And even the teachers themselves are different in their jargon and their words. The 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 one who teaches Physics has jargon that is different from the one who teaches uh, history or biology. Is it clear what we mean by jargon and register and style? And style sometimes is formal and sometimes it's informal. Sometimes it's affected by the occasion, sometimes by formality, sometimes by the medium, whether speech or writing or sign language. So social linguistics is interested in, in studying all kinds of relationships between language and society within a speech community. Sociolinguists are not interested in the phonology of the language or the morphology of the language or the syntax or the semantics or the pragmatics of the language as they are. No, sociolinguists are only interested in these aspects only when they are affected by a social factor. يعني فقط من الفونولوجي يكون إلى علاقة في حالة اجتماعية يلا يلا يأخذها السوسيالينجست يعني من واحد شاف إنه سكان منطقة معينة يلفظون القاء غاء لاحظ هاي الحالة وجه حلل أو يجي واحد يحلل الفاولز 
اختلافات الباورز بين شخص عايش بمركز البصره وشخص عايش مثلا بمركز العماره او في احد اطراف مدينه العماره وياخذ الفاولز مثلا ياخذ الفاول ساوند ونشوف احنا ملاحظين اكو ناس تقول زين واكو ناس تقول زين ملاحظين هذا الشيء ولا لا؟ اكو ناس تقول والحسين اكو ناس تقول والحسين العزيز والعزيز بيت وبيت بيتكم و و وبيتكم لاحظوا هنا الضمه هنا أنا حتى بداخل داخل المحافظه نفسها المنطقه الجغرافيه تاثر الضمه هي حركه هي فاول بيتكم بالضمه وبيتكم بالفتحه اختلف الشورت فاول هنا خلاص لاحظت في شيء معين اوبزرفيشن شنو الخطوه الثانيه؟ داتا كولكشن اي ويل جو اند كولكت از ماني داتا اور داتا از اي كان واروح اروح لهذا القضاء واخذ جهاز التسجيل مالتي اوكي وافتر واسجل And then I will collect data and then I go back home and I start analyzing these data. يعتمد بعد الاناليسز مالتي على شنو راح يكون؟ على حسب دراستي وفرضيتي. هل هو فونولوجي لو مورفولوجي لو سينتاكس لو سيماتكس لو براغماتكس. So social linguists are not interested in language. Social linguists are only interested when there is a relationship between language and society. Only when there is a relationship between language and society. بالقرن ممكن تكثر الإين أنا يعني كنت أروح هناك بس ما يعني صحيح ملاحظ هذا الشيء بس ما متأكد من عنده مية بالمية استدعنا نعم واضحة واضح هسه وصلت الفكرة شنو نقصد بالسوشيال لينغوستكس and the things that social linguistics is interested in what I say When I say a speech community, as this is a speech community, a group of people, how the tariffe, who consider that they speak the same language. That's a speech community. Tariff thani akthar yani dqa. A speech community is a group of people who share a set of linguistic norms and expectations regarding the use of language. It's a, a concept mostly associated with social linguistics and anthropological linguistics. So people. who interact frequently, who share certain norms, ideologies, نفس الأفكار, like villages, countries, political professions, communities, they share the same interests, the same hobbies, the same lifestyle, the same habits. Even a group of friends is con- considered a speech community. Speakers of one dialect. المحاضرة القادمة راح نحكي عن الاختلافات بين الدايلكت والأكسنت وأنواع الدايلكت. شلون الدايلكت تتغير الكلامك يتغير بسبب المنطقه الجغرافيه وهذا النوع الاول وشلون احيانا ياثر عليه جنسك انت شنو او عمرك او او طبقتك الاجتماعيه او وظيفتك او تعليمك الحالات الاجتماعيه وشنو نقصد بالاكسنت هاي راح ناخذها المحاضره القادمه موجوده عندكم على الكلاس روم ممكن تحضروها اوكي ونتكلم بيها اما المحاضرات اللي بعدها خلونا بس اشغل لكم الملفات دقيقه حتى بارت 2 موجود يمكن ممكن تقروا انتم بارت 2 ان شاء الله المحاضره القادمه راح نحكي عن الدايركت والاكسنت ايضا راويكم فيديوهات شويه مراجعه لهي المحاضره من اليوتيوب يعني تفيدكم ايضا مثلا بارت 2 هي ان بارت 2 وي ويل توك اباوت فاريشنز ويذن سبيتش اوف ا سنجل بيرسون ان فاريشن بيتوين بيبل يعني شلون نفس الشخص احيانا يحكي قدامك شكل وقدام شخص اخر شكل طبيعي جدا لانه لانه الموضوع يتحكم الموضوع يتحكم بكلام هذا الشخص واحيانا الفورماليتي تتحكم فورماليتي اوف اوف ذا اوكيجن يعني رسميه المناسبه تتحكم وين جاي يحكي هو مثلا بسوق 
لو محاضرة هنا المكان نوع المكان يحدد نوع كلامه وشنو وسيلة كلامه هل هي كلام لو كتابة لو إشارة We will talk about this in part two and we will define register and jargon اللي هسا حشينا عليهم okay uh, and community competence هذا هذا part two Uh, in part three, in part three, we will talk about differences between speech and writing. The Klonginen of social linguistics is also interested in knowing the differences between speech and writing. Minu akta taqidin, minu bi e'adu, minu bi thalim bi kalimat sa'bu, or minu bi jumal naqsa ila akhari. And we will talk about the social networks and the two types of social networks. High density networks and low density networks. Yani. شبكات اجتماعية عالية الكثافة وقليلة الكثافة كثافة السكانية نقصد بها شو نسمي الشبكة الاجتماعية أو المجتمع اللي شخص عايش مكان ويشتغل في مكان آخر مثلا في في مدينة أخرى أو يشتغل في نفس المدينة ويحتك مع ناس من نفس المدينة أو لا شخص يروح يشتغل في شركة ثانية والناس اللي وياه كلهم جايين من أماكن مختلفة هذا شو راح نسميها نتورك لاحظوا هاي اكو اشكال هنا ولاحظوا هاي فيسبوك انستغرام يوتيوب تيك توك لينكدين تويتر سناب شات هذن ايضا نقدر نعتبرهم سوشيال نتوركس اند سبيتش كوميونيتيز يصير بي احتكاك اجتماعي لو ما يصير يصير خلاص اذا اذا ممكن حتى انا ادرس ذا لينغوستيك اسبيكتس And these social networks. How do we call it? Social 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 متفر واحد قاعد انا اذكر لي استاذ بالماجستير درسني وقال انا في اليوم قاعد اعتقد سامعين بي استاذ الشاب هو بالاداب درسنا بالماجستير قال انا في اليوم قاعد هو كان مجر شقه بالحيانيه ما اعرف وين فيقول جيرانهم دجاجه طفرت دجاجه مال جيرانهم طفرت على على بيتهم فاجت المراه هاده على بالك ما اعرف شنو طافر على البيت هو ما له علاقه يعني فاجت تدق الباب يقول فلشت الباب قالت قالت له قال لها شنو؟ قالت له دجاجتنا طفرت ما ادري دجاجتنا ما اعرف شلون قالتها فطفرت على بيتكم قال لها اي حجي هسه انت فلشتي الباب يعني هو اذا قالت قالت له يما هاي دجاجتنا بيضتها سحابه فهو قال انا بقت ببالي هاي الحكايه مال بيضتها سحابه فانت من تاخذ السيجنفيكنس مال هاي مال هاي العباره بيضتها سحابه وتحلل شنو يعني؟ هذا ما تفع هذا متفر مجاز استعارة فراح يجوز واحد مثلا يقول هي لأنه لأنه كبيرة يسموها بهذا الشيء بيضتها سحابة السحابة يعني الغيمة يعني كلاود واحد يقول لا لأنه بيضتها خير مثل ما الغيمة خير فهي بيضتها يعني خير وبركة أو بيضتها يجوز بيضة لونها أبيض مثل السحابة فهي لها وين معاني ف من تكون انت لغوي ومختص باللغه انت راح ظل تنتبه على كل الاشياء اللي تطلق بالمجتمع مالك. ف يعني سواء كانت الامور حرفيه او امور مجازيه ما لها علاقه. بالنسبه للحضور لا بعدني ماكو رابط حضور انا اصور الحضور فد شوي واصور الحضور. البارس الاخرى مثلا شنو ناخذ يعني ممكن ايضا هنا أنا بالسوشيال لينغوستكس Sex or gender, language and sex, males and females. Look at the symbols, males and females. And which which term we should use? The differences in in the speech of women and 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 men. The claims like women talk more than men, and you know other claims. Men use the empty adjectives. Men use the empty adjectives like that. Like for example, cute and charming, adorable and nice and beautiful. Ila akhiri. And whose speech is more polite? And why? وغيرها هذا أيضا نحكي عنها in one part of this chapter. In another part of this chapter, we will also talk uh, about the powerful talking, power talking, power and language. Who speaks a more powerful language, the man or the woman? 
and why and how can you make your speech more powerful نشوف احيانا احيانا من نتحدث مع بعض الاشخاص ما ينطي لنا مجال يقاطعنا او يحكي بصوت عالي او او مثلا يعتبر نفسه او يستهزئ او يعتبر نفسه he is the best speaker and he knows about everything This is also the power. And who are we talking? The man or the woman? And we will also talk about that. And what are the qualities of a powerful speaker? One who speaks a loud voice, one who speaks with rich vocabulary, one who has the power to persuade the others, or one who has different speaking styles. We'll talk about this in more details when we reach to part five of this chapter. And the last part of this chapter We will talk about the multilingual societies and about code switching, switching from one language to another, one code to another. And we will talk about differences between code switching and code mixing. And we will also talk about language planning, language planning and language policies. شوف أحيانا بعض الدول يمنعون مثلا استخدام اللغة العربية في المدارس. مثلا تركيا بعض مدارسها ممنوع استخدام اللغة العربية أطلاقا. أو بإيران بعض المدارس أو إيران أصلا ممنوع استخدام اللغة الإنجليزية في المؤسسات العامة. Because they believe that your native language is your identity, and you should keep using your native language, not other languages. And then how the cross? We have in the store the languages rasmi in Iraq, languages, the Arabic and the Kurdic. These languages rasmi. Even the store is written in languages, the Arabic and the Kurdic. This is called language planning, where the government arranges for these things. Now, 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 the government arranges for these things. يعني مجتمعات اللي يحكون مثلا اسباني وانجليزي والماني لازم اكو اكو وحده من هاي اللغات تعتبر the lingua franca the common language spoken by most people there وبيجنز والكريولز اللي حكينا عنها ايضا راح نحكي عنها ان شاء الله بنهايه هذا الشابتر That was just an introduction to the field of social linguistics in part one, and and, and we will continue part one next lecture and talk about the differences between dialects and accents, and also the two types of dialects. That will be all for today. Rest assured, Hadur.